Hey guys, awesome cast this week. We talk about digital downloads. We talk about backups. We talk about what the cops got now on you. One way tickets to Mars and how far can Chucky push his internet connection talking about Nazis before they let it go. All that and more awesome cast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 145. I'm Michael Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get our geek on here. And with me is my trusty sidekick, Chachi. I'm here. <laughs> He's still R- remote location. Still ostracized from the studios. Still yes. ostracized from the studios. How you doing, Chachi? Well, my rehab's almost over, so I could probably come back soon. Well, I'm glad we instituted that Sorgatron Media Wellness Policy a couple months ago, because yeah. uh, I was a little worried about you, bud. Yeah, well, you know, I'm still addicted to video games, so it didn't really fix anything. Well, that's okay. It helps kids once a year, right? <laughs> I'm sure um, it does. <laughs> so, uh, and of course, over he's over at insertcointobegin.com with a new article. Yes, um, uh, Versus 3, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, Versus 3. Um, did a, <laughs> they broke down the uh, mathematical cost of the wars that happen in Call of Duty. <laughs> the insane wars that happen in Call of Duty. Yes, and they broke it down to a, a per hour basis. Um, and it turned out to be rather expensive. <laughs> oh, um, the I, I don't remember the exact number, but I know that for one hour of playing mm-hmm. or of of an actual Call of Duty based war, using uh, the cheapest gun and the cheapest uh, score streak, uh, equaled what the game has made in the sixty dollars sales. <laughs> Not including DLC, right? No, not including the DLC, just the uh, the sixty dollars sales. Nice, but uh, and it you can tell that they uh, they're not exactly perfect with math mm-hmm. because all through the video uh, you'll see corrections, and if you go to the YouTube channel, they have all the uh, the corrections uh, laid out for you. Awesome, but um, it, yeah, it's it's interesting to see how much it would cost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also uh, the new uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 downloadable content came out today. It's uh, four packs and a new, or not a, yeah, a new uh, version of the Zombies game. Uh, Which looks interesting, Law. but of course we'll talk about that more in Let's Play a little bit later this a- or this evening uh, right. in our recording schedule. So Correct. Of course, this is the awesome cast where we like to get geeky every Tuesday night here at 7 p.m. Eastern, SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, you can drop us a line. Um, over at awesomecast.com, contact at awesome, awesomecast.com. Uh, you can also tweet us at awesomecast, as well as on our Facebook and our Google Plus. Uh, we like to put out the stories through the week to kind of get a feel of uh, you know what are you guys into and stuff. You know, you know that that we should talk to if you guys have any commentary for us to bring into the the conversation. Um, so kind of a weird week on stories, Chachi, this week. So we'll see how we do with this. Uh, I got I got a couple interesting ones in there. It was a little little different, little different than what we usually do, I think. Uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, and of course, uh, we like to start the show uh, with the awesome thing of the week, and I think I'm the only one with one. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, it was a busy weekend. Yeah, um, and so I was uh, kind of behind on my news. So I went through and. I uh, checked a couple sites today and didn't really see anything that stood out for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than uh, pe- people making mistakes, uh, there wasn't <laughs> any. And, and uh, what I'm talking about is Comcast is uh, starting to incorporate that everybody that has their service has to have a box now. Well, they've been um, moving towards that for a while, haven't they? Right, but it so, wasn't so necessary. It wasn't required. You're right. 
Okay. And now it's going to be because they want to encrypt everything. Well, and that's been a thing for a while because now, okay, now I can't hook up a, <laughs> I can't hook up a VCR. I can't hook up my own DVR. I have to go right. through their system. They basically made it a closed system, which right. I guess they have every right to do. But, you know, and, and it locks it down. And they're the ones that are, well, they're also the content providers now, too. Remember, they're NBC Comcast. Um, so now they get to shore up all that stuff and, and make good with all the rest of the content providers, right? Yeah, but... It's still not right. So how, yeah, um, saying, because how do you... they're gonna they're gonna charge people to have this re- equipment, but they're gonna also require people to have this equipment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I mean, never you're basically that. saying eh, you're not paying us enough. So we're making we're incorporating this rule, which is in turn going to make you have to pay us more. Do you think this is more a copyright issue, or is this because uh, this is just another way to get more money? Because I know I know my my, my grandparents' place, like uh, over the years, like they've always had massive switch- switchers, uh, uh, where they I, you know it's like one line coming in, but they had a TV in the family room, in the living room, in the kitchen, down in the basement, in at least two of the bedrooms. And you know that's just a bunch of splitters and split out throughout the house and everything. Uh, you think that's just a crackdown on that? Say, okay, if you want that many TVs that we're providing this content to you, you want that many head displays you know, to do this with, you, we're going to get a little bit more out of you for each one of those. No, because, I mean, as is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it hasn't been required, but as is, even if you have a splitter or several, like I have here, mm-hmm. uh, you were you, you only got six, seven channels. Really, that low? I thought it was always like the first like sixty or something. No, that's wow. what the box was for. I didn't know it got down that. And far. now, I mean, with the box, I can get uh, one through uh, sixty-seven. Mm-hmm. And then I get, uh, like, some of the higher channels, too, like uh, Big Ten Sports, and I can get a couple of the -the over-the-air QED channels uh, that I watch the crap out of. Um, But it was only if you wanted uh, the basic digital pack, did you need the box? Yeah. And now they're saying everyone needs the box. But then again, is this any different than everybody else? Fios has never had an instance. I mean, this the cable is kind of the oldest technology here. Uh, the satellites we've always had to have them. Again, Fios has never had the option where I can just run a coaxial in and plug right in, right? Well, I mean, it's a different service, though. Yeah, it's a different technology. I, yeah, the, it's a it's a different technology. So you're not you're not you're not making people change from cassettes to CDs. If you get the analogy, mm-hmm. and that's basically what Comcast is doing now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's this uh, uh, Tom in the chat room is saying, "Does that?" Oh no, no that's a different comment. Uh, I think it's a money issue. You can advertise a low monthly rate and then hit them with the box rental uh, uh, to up the monthly rate. Yeah, they never include the boxes no, when, when they're saying, "Oh, only uh, thirty dollars a month with uh, all the phone and all the other crap," right? Um, right. so I, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I, it, I mean, right now I'm paying, I probably pay an extra $20 a month for, uh, the boxes I need for my house. Yeah. And that's just the ones that get me, uh, the basic digital tier. Like yeah. I, I have, uh, I only have one DVR box in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all I'm, uh, that's all I will pay for. Well, you always got Xfinity on all your computers, right? Right. I have Xfinity on all my computers. I have HBO plus on all my, or to go on all my computers. Hmm. I have Xbox with all of these things. So are we even worried about having multiple TVs? Really? Like, you know, everybody can have a laptop in their bedroom and they're covered with TV because you have all the access, at least when, as far as Comcast goes, but everybody else is kind of meeting that standard too. And that's why I won't I, – I don't need – like I, I'm not about to run out and be like, oh, look at me. I'm going to cut the cord. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it. I'm not going to do that. They're provide, And they're providing the kind of things that cutting the cord would have done for you anyways. Right. So – but, but so, I mean, I you don't, don't have to, to – you, you don't have to change that, that medium of I can flip on a TV just like I'm used to the last, you know, 20 years of my life and all that stuff's there too. Right. Plus, I have all the additional things. So right. It's kind of I nice. mean, it, that's that's the type of stuff that happened this week that I wasn't mm-hmm. um, happy with. But I, I've been trying to stay away from being negative because everyone's all <laughs> good. negative. Good. And good. Good start. 
<laughs> so I was being nice to Comcast. I could go off on Netflix too, and we'll cover that later. But. All righty, we'll talk about that. I didn't know that was a negative story, but we'll get to that. Um, I got I got kind of a nifty tool. I have actually got two, and the other one I'll just kind of slip in there as a story. Uh, but as you know, we launched a pretty significant documentary in, in, over this last couple uh, weeks here, Chach. Uh, yes, the Montreal did. theory, which is getting a little bit of traction out there, I understand. Um, and I needed, I've been wanting to do something different for the digital downloads we've been serving. And and I've been looking at, okay, Squarespace had this really cool thing where they could do digital downloads and have a store just kind of built in, right? I think it's like a little bit more a month. Like I think it's up to like about $20 a month if you do this. But they only have like 200 megabyte downloads. Mm -hmm. I had been using a thing, uh, as you know, uh, called uh, PowDrop, where I got to the point where I, I was getting stuff in there i'm paying this guy 30 dollars a month it's weird it's kind of a russian guy I, i'm not entirely sure i wasn't mad at the service but it really just it it just links uh my dropbox to paypal so i can put something in my dropbox it sends a link and uh and and you know and I make that connection it's been doing really well for us right then i i was like there's got to be something in wordpress that we can use so i I, I mean, I have all this space because I upgraded my, my stuff a little bit because we were filling out with all the sites we were sticking on the Sorgatron Media site. Um, and I was, there's got to be something that just interfaces with WordPress and, like, pulls this off, right? So, and I, as stupid as this sounds, this thing's called Easy Digital Downloads, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a plug-in, and you connect it up with your PayPal, and for the most part, it does all the work for you. Um, and, and it's worked pretty okay i do have one major glitch where it isn't um manually fulfilling all of the uh downloads like it's not sending the receipt emails to anybody that's other than my email for some reason so i'm trying to troubleshoot that but other than that uh, it looks like in most cases this is a really cool uh a way to go about this and i mean on my GoDaddy, i have like i think it's like 160 gigs of storage i don't even know where it came from uh and unlimited bandwidth so i can send my like two gigabyte shows that we're selling uh off something like this so i i think this is a really cool solution for um you know for any content producers out there trying trying to sell something like that and it's like tends to be bigger files like we're talking about uh, with the stuff we're doing, it gives a lot of really cool stats. Let you know, like how many times things have been downloaded, limited how many times people can download if you want. Um, and, and and like I said, with, with with this thing, which is free, they have some stuff you can cart in there if you want to use something other than PayPal or some other kind of uh, specific services for for uh, for your transactions. Um, other than that, it's completely free and, and, and works pretty well. Like, like I said, there's that one issue I need to figure out. Um, and otherwise, I need to go just keep an eye on my email and manually fulfill everybody's order. So it's not an instant digital download, but I'm never going to call it instant when this file is like four gigabytes people have to download. Yeah. Um, so we're staying away from that part of the marketing <laughs> anyways. Uh, so other than that, disclaimers with that, and, and maybe it's GoDaddy, but the link that they send doesn't always work in Chrome. Um, but it still connects most of the dots I was looking for. It's one of those I'm hoping that this thing uh, continues to be upgraded and smooths out all those little problems that I'm finding so far. Um, but you know, it, it seems like a pretty good one-stop solution uh, otherwise. So if you guys are any, any of you WordPress nuts out there, I know you're out there. Now I'm very aware you guys are out there now. Uh, go check that out. It's easydigitaldownloads.com. Um, and it looks good. It looks like they're they're doing some serious stuff. Like, like I, heard, I saw the site. And, you know, you see, like, anything that says easy and says exactly what you're looking for, like easy YouTube downloads. That's usually bad news, right, Chach? Right. And uh, but this one, uh, I, I looked into a little bit and it seems for real and it seems to work all right. And uh, we've been pretty successful with it here in the last couple uh, weeks for uh, for Montreal Theory. And so I want to start rolling it out with a lot of the, of the other stuff and, and hopefully to we'll start pushing a lot of the back catalog, too, that we have from the wrestling promotions we work with. It'll be a lot easier because uh, the upgrading the storage capacity for uh, for GoDaddy is is a lot cheaper in the long run than doing Dropbox. So, and it looks like it's a little less awkward because Dropbox kind of started making the links a little weird and they give you a player that doesn't entirely work because of the large file and they don't know the download them. So, so that's one thing. That's why I never used, and yes, I'm admitting this, I've never used our digital downloads. Well, you've had no reason to because you don't have to buy anything. Well, I mean, even the ones that you, sh you send out. Okay. Um, like, okay. I, I don't really use because... Uh, 
Dropbox just makes it awkward. It does. It does. Because, like I said, it's not immediate. They're like, oh, here's a download link. Well, Dropbox gave you this player, and there's a download button up here. So now I have yeah. to explain. So I have people messaging me saying, hey, it only played the first match. It's like, oh, no, no, download it. You Don't don't just play the player. I'm sorry. It's a little weird, awkward. So I had been looking for something different. Um, other, other than that, I'm looking for some solution for doing streaming, like streaming rentals. Uh, I have been trying to figure out how do we get into YouTube's rental system. Uh, I've been looking at Vimeo. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to drop the $200 a year to make that happen just yet. Um, maybe we get to a point where uh, well, we get to a point that I feel comf- comfortable with the digital downloads. We'll kind of look at the streaming option a little bit more. And maybe it will be worth us to, you know, put that fee on something on, like Vimeo. Because Vimeo seems like the most serious contender that I'm not worried about. You know right. what I mean? Um, so I kind of like this because everything it involves just my WordPress GoDaddy for hosting and uh, PayPal. You know, I, 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 there's no like weird point of failure like I have with this Dropbox, PayPal, somebody else connection I have going on here. Nothing against the service I've been using with PowDrop has been amazing. I just think this is a, maybe a better solution for what I'm trying to go for. Um, so, so there's that. So there, I got one more thing that I've been pretty excited about. Uh, it's just launched, so it's really, really bucky right now. There was some, there's an issue where like half of my stuff disappeared, and we know I've been always talked about how much stuff I have up there. Um, Backblaze, and if I can find the tab for that, uh, Backblaze actually uh, finally launched their mobile app. And as you guys know, uh, you know, Backblaze is the service that I use for a lot of my backups. I got my Drobos hooked up to that thing. I have uh, who knows how many files up there, large files, small files. I, you know, I do a lot of video. I got two filled Drobos practically uh, sending files up to there all the time. And I know, you know, with the bulk of stuff I have, I'm not never going to be 100% backed up. But I know at least like the majority of it will be taken care of, you know. So it, that's still worth the five bucks a month for me. But they uh, they, they just launched this app and, and there's a little bit of limitation on it. But again, it's brand new. So I think they're going to lift it a little bit here, you know, as they go. I can understand the, the 30 megabyte file limit for downloading to your phone. Um, but that's probably just so nobody kills their servers. At this point, just launching this thing. So uh, so they have an app on their phone. I know some other, you know, I think Carbonite and some of the other guys have had this for a while. Uh, but Backblaze has been kind of like the tiny, you know, version of, of these guys. And they've always been a lot cooler with things. Like they, you can attach drives and still pay the $5 a month. And they don't have any limits uh, on file sizes. They used to. It used to be like 4 gigs and it was 9 gigs. And now they'll say, oh, I'll download your insane, you know, 50 gigabyte <laughs> uh, uh, render file you just put up. You know, um, I've been trying not to do those anymore for keeps. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but it's kind of nice because if it's something like, yeah, and I have it on my laptop too. Like, I don't have a lot on my laptop, uh, you know, because everything is typically, you know, hooked up to my Mac Mini and it's backing up all that stuff. I kind of more kind of pay that extra five bucks for my laptop for a little bit extra peace of mind if I happen to be working on something small on there. Um, because I, I've just been looking at the dents the other day, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know this thing could go any day now. The way it's been going, uh, knock on wood. Uh, but that idea of like you know, hey, I was working on this flyer. Oh crap! You know, I didn't know I needed to bring that, or you know, or or I didn't bring that, or 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 got deleted somewhere. I know I can go up on Backblaze, and that thing was probably backed up. I can bring it right down on my phone and say, oh, hey, here's that thing I was working on. Um, so, again, 30 megabyte limit, but I think that's really, that whole idea, you know, like I've been really kind of talking about lately that, that living in, in the cloud and my business is in the cloud, you know, every computer could, could explode here, you know, in my house, and I still have work can continue. I just need to go grab myself a Chromebook and I can continue, you know what I mean? Um that's a whole other discussion we were having this week. Um, so I, I don't know. That was Everyone's kind of, having that discussion lately. It is. It is. I know AJ and I had a pretty good one on Twitter the other day. That's actually has him. I think. I think he's. Cons- what he's, he's telling me last night. He's considering a Chromebook now because I, I brought it up. Uh, he wants to get his hands on one at least, at least to try it out. Um, so uh, because I, I made I made the you know probably more strict statement than it needed to be that unless you're doing video editing. Uh, and need a you know insane MacBook Pro, which I found out you you don't get the Nvidia's until you get the higher end of every model. Um, like 
you got you got your, your video graphics professionals that should probably get yourself that Retina Mac Pro insane two three thousand dollar thing, and then everybody else really should get a Chromebook. Right is my contention, and obviously there's some things in the middle there like I need Skype, I need I need this program uh, might work. You know you know you know very well which programs work for uh, the people you know at your business that 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 those those two sides of it wouldn't even work with right? Uh, right but other than that i think for the general you know there's there's the people that are going to be just fine with the chromebook and then there's going to be the professionals that, that are going to want that that insane macbook pro so um that's that's my new evangelist topic lately Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so so Josh, uh what do you what are you doing over there pouring a drink pouring a drink what about it <laughs> Like you're getting a little bit of a bubbly going on there, right? Yep. Good to go. I made myself some iced coffee before we uh, kicked off tonight. Nice. So I'm loving that Keurig, man. Loving it. Uh, and, and I got the good. Uh, Chella was talking about the San Francisco, like e economical or e ergo, ergo, not ergo, not e e e uh, ecologically sound uh, San Francisco coffee things in there. I don't feel so bad about them now. <laughs> so. I, uh, I don't think I could ever do a Keurig. Why? I drink too much coffee. Really? Too much coffee? Well, I think it also kind of lets you... Um, yeah, but, but then you don't have to make coffee in the morning. You just put the thing in and it, 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 we're not getting on that. <laughs> so, All right, Chachi. You, you, you're, you're familiar with our Google Docs that we use here, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. What, what, what if... Uh, and you, you work on a website. Yeah. A couple of them, actually, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, don't you wish you had a little bit more control over a few of those? Like, like you know, like. I was looking at it. I, I don't. I'm unsure. I'll, I'll try it tomorrow when I get to work. Um, uh, I'll install the plugin and everything, and but I. I I'm I, unsure, Sorg. I'm I think unsure. it takes a little bit more than just kind of installing it and checking out. I, I, I need to get a little bit into it, but. Uh, uh, there, Mozilla has a new experiment out, and again, it's an experiment, so I'm not saying this is something we install on over WordPress and give it a shot or anything like that, you know. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll try on Chachi Says. We can play with that a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, but Mozilla's got this thing uh, called Tow Truck, right? And it's supposed to add Google Drive-like collaboration to any site. So, you know, again, like, you know, us for the show, we have we both have a Google Doc up or there'll be like, you know, four or five of us on certain shows and we're all in the doc. We're all adding and looking at and and, and somebody like, hey, hey, add this for the next segment. And, and it's all kind of live uh, collaboration going on. Right. Right. This is going to add kind of the same thing to web development. That's why I'm thinking like this isn't necessarily something like you and I need to get in on um, because it, it, it's going to be a little more like getting in there and doing the HTML uh, in a collaborative sense. Um, I guess it's all going to work just right in a browser. You just put the plug in and I think there's a little bit of code. I say it's, a, it's an alpha quality software kind of thing, but kind of seeing that this is something that's coming up, um, this whole idea it looks like it's going to add what feels like that kind of what I love about Squarespace and what I love about Google Drive documents, like in a website to any website. Yeah, that looks see, like. I don't know if I'd have a use for it or not. That's I, the thing. Yeah, and I don't think this isn't like a, a beginner kind of thing. This is more like I, the, from what they were saying, there's going to be more like an intermediate and up sort of situation. So uh, here it looks like they're redesigning Craigslist, for instance. Huh. Um, but this is probably just a few uh, test cases. This looks like, I mean, this looks like it's the kind of thing where you remember when you could like plug in a website and it would like give you the website, but with like unicorns on it for no reason. Yeah. Like, oh, and actually that one part, it, it was showing a little bit of WordPress kind of situation too. So uh, that, that could be really interesting for, you know, kind of a, a, a future project uh, uh, kind of thing. Like, if we do decide to, like, maybe redesign a site or start a new site in a while and say, hey, let's do some of this. And when you're in that unfortunate position when you have a client that really wants to be hands-on or something like that, you know. <laughs> uh, so, um, but, yeah, I, I think it's a really cool thing. Mozilla's doing a lot of interesting experiments. They're doing a phone. What the heck? You know. Uh, it's another one of those groups that doesn't need to be in the phone business. I'm just 
But nobody needs to be in the phone business. Ubuntu does not need to be in the phone business. No, they um, don't. But everybody leave the phone business alone. But the but the fact that it works. You know, Linux is like the most propagated operating system like in the world right now, mostly thanks to Android. Did you think like remember remember back in the day you know our good friend Maddie that was put on Linux on his little 200 megahertz gateway computer and got about five more years out of that thing and saying you know telling us and I don't know if he was the one that said this thing but I know I heard it a lot from some people said Linux is the future someday everybody's going to be running on Linux dude it's happening <laughs> you're doing it on my phone I'm doing it how the Macs run on Unix uh it, it's it, people just general people walking into a cricket store are running on Linux. Toasters run on Linux. Refrigerators run on Linux. It, it, it's insane. And then you get Toasters guys... Toasters do not run on Linux. I'm sure there's a toaster that runs on Linux. Stay out of my toast. Stay out of your toast. Do not <laughs> Linux my toast. Um, do not bash script my toast. Okay? <laughs> so, I, but I just, just like that kind of like idea that, that it is everywhere like that. Title options. So... I don't know. Not Linux. What are you doing? My <laughs> you, toast. Don't Linux my toast. <laughs> Got that. Got that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Chachi, you've dealt with the police. I have dealt with the police. <laughs> you've had you've had your run-ins with the law. I have. Thinking that you've stolen your, your own car, <sighs> et cetera, et cetera. Well, what if, if they were about to tase you? They were uh, always able to catch that on camera. Don't tease me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is something that came up, actually. Uh, I have a kind of a, a, a company story I also found that is really kind of unrelated. Um, so uh, the Verge cast had kind of a special edition uh, this week, and I'll see if I can pull up the video. Where well, they are talking, they had a basic kind of law enforcement and privacy kind of discussion. Uh, they did talk about the idea uh, of of the FAA saying, okay, what are we doing to regulate drones? Like, domestic drones. Okay, we're all talking about Obama's bombing people uh, overseas and everything, especially from our good friend Hutch over at Steel City Resistance. Go check it out. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the idea that these domestic... Uh, aren't there drones doing traffic tickets now? Like I know, like we have like air air traffic control when we go on the turnpike across Ohio, and how many of those are drones now? You yeah. know, um, they're they're starting to think about doing that. And then, you know, what is that privacy? If you fly a drone over my fence backyard, you know, is that you know, is that is that evidence? You know, is that allowable? Is that admissible? Because you know, are you because you're using this technology? Uh, but the, kind of the other interesting idea, and this kind of goes with the like, okay, you know, you have your Google Glass kind of idea, and everybody's filming everything. Um, but Taser's going to offer something, starting already offer something. I want to try to find the video they showed here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So, again, this is over on TheVerge.com, their uh, Verge cast from this past week. So, this is actually a camera mounted on the police officer, if you're on the video here. Um, again, by the company Taser. I don't think it's, like, attached to the Taser device or anything like that. So, you see him uh, going, uh, and, you know, it's going to be jumping. It looks like it's probably attached to his vest or something. Um, what, what happens is when uh, uh, the, the, the officer finds himself... Uh, in a situation where he has to pursue a suspect, has to deal with, but with some kind of situation, he can hit record. Within the next 30 seconds, it will start recording. And there he's got his taser out. He's about to hit this guy. I, uh, and you hear him warning him like several times. So now, you know, not only do we have the cameras on our cop, the cop's vehicle, but this will be recording. And it gets sent to a place called evidence.com. Where they get to store it for, uh, you know, 180 days, and there's all kinds of, you know, what happens with this? What, when is it permissible? What can they do with it? Who gets to edit it? Uh, that kind of situation. Um, but I don't know. What do you think of that? The, that idea that the cops are are able to record, and then can, part of the idea is you think, you know, okay, cop doesn't want to be recorded all the time, right? Um, but. This is being seen. A lot of officers are apparently asking for this because there's been that debate lately about can you be arrested for uh, filming a police officer, uh, you know, you know, busting somebody like, you know, what's happened with the San Francisco BART system uh, uh, that that caused the the, the big, uh, uh, you know, deal in San Francisco. Um, 
and there's a lot of more cases coming up like this. Uh, Chachi, do you think this is something um, you know that's good for the police officers, good for us to make sure that things aren't happening uh, that shouldn't? I think it's good for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it covers the the police's ass. Mm -hmm. um, it'll stop you from, and it ultimately, I mean. If it's covering the police's ass, it's covering your ass as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it's right there. They have it on the internet for evidence. Yeah, and, and not necessarily something for everybody to see or anything like that. Uh, but it is like if something came up, there was an incident. Uh, you know, I mean, how many times do we hear about, you know, uh, even in this area, you know, in the Pittsburgh area, uh, uh, somebody being shot and the family's outraged because they say the kid didn't have a gun or didn't do anything with, co you know, the, co right. the cost perception is maybe he was in danger. But, you know, and maybe the guys was just scared and did a stupid move, you know, uh, now this is another chance to get evidence of what did really happen with something like that. I mean, ultimately, it, it's something that needs to be. A procedure, mm -hmm. and, and if you if you look at our, our bike cops downtown, mm -hmm. uh, they always ride in pairs, mm -hmm. and one of them has a helmet cam. Oh, I didn't notice. Um, and it's always uh, always recording. Are so, you sure I it's mean, always recording? Well, I mean, it's I, I'm assuming it's always recording, like a cop car. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean. Uh, it needs to be put in place that they they start recording using this technology mm -hmm. uh, whenever they go into a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no matter how menial the situation, it, it, it's seriously a, a cover-your-ass situation. Well, I think it's a, there is no menial situation. I think the most dangerous thing is the traffic stop that is probably the most common um, out there because that's when you know anything can happen if you pull it over the wrong guy. So... Well, I mean, you got to look at it from, like, a, a simple uh, domestic dispute, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone's having a, large, a loud argument mm -hmm. and the cops get called, at, at, no matter what happens at that argument, mm -hmm. they should be recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, and it's something that will cost, will end up costing more, but in the long run, it's got to be cheaper than facing the lawsuits. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, so, I mean... Especially some of these that may get frivolous and everything. Until privacy so, laws. Until privacy laws. Yeah, privacy is the only concern there. Um, and that and that's why they, they had this kind of discussion on the Vergecast between that and the drones and, you know, the cameras everywhere. I mean, you go to cities, there's a lot of cameras. You go to, uh, I believe London has is just littered with cameras. Listen, we've discussed this before. There's no such thing as privacy anymore. No, no, no. There's the expectation of privacy is definitely gone. Uh, at least when you're out and about, um, you know. We and I think we need to just you know clutch onto that you know in our own homes at least. Right. Uh, I mean, if I'm behind my door, mm -hmm. then we can uh, talk privacy. But then you're behind your own door and you're hooked up on Facebook, and that kind of blows the rest of it. Right. So. So I mean. But it's voluntary. Yeah. Whether you but realize I mean, it or not, you, that's voluntary. As soon as you open the door or step out onto your porch, mm -hmm. that expectation of privacy is gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may be in on your pro own property or the property that you're renting. You're still out in public. Mm -hmm. right, there's no cover there. Exactly. Oh, here's something else that, uh, you know, and this is, again, hey, look, Linux in another place, guys. Um, there's a New York cops, and I think in San Francisco as well, uh, according to the article, are now going to be armed with a crime-busting Android app. So That th does what? That does what? So, like, it seems like, you know how, like, they always have that computer in the cop car? And, it, you know, they, they go take your stuff back and look up your registration and they get, like, your whole, like, is there any warrants or anything like that? Uh, it looks like that's the kind of stuff that's provided on this app. Actually, the device that they're giving the officers actually doesn't take any in in incoming or outgoing phone calls. It's just a data device. Um, so it's just going to provide that kind of information, um, which can be handy because, I mean, you, you know, those bicycle cops you talk about, they don't have access to a computer like that typically, like you would if you were in a cop car. Or what if you're a foot patroller, especially in some place like New York City? You know, how many of those guys are in a cop car in the long run, you know? Um, they're just out and about uh, patrolling. 
Um, so, yeah, it says there's Android smartphones. Uh, it's a new pilot uh, aimed at improving police and public safety. According to the New York Times, the department has already distributed over 400 smartphones to its officers last summer, uh, providing them with detailed access to uh, police data while on the move. So I think it's pretty uh, – the information is key in this point. Yeah, right? They need to be turned in at the end of a shift. <laughs> well, I don't think they're going to be useful for anything else though, right? It doesn't matter. The wrong people get in, get a hold of that. Yeah. That's a huge security. Well, wait a minute. This is police information. Isn't that right. isn't most police information public? Not the typical information that they might have on there. Okay. I mean, if they have people's like data. Yeah. It, it, I mean, who knows the the amount of information that's available in that app? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it says it's going to have uh, the data connections can assist an officer in looking up suspects' criminal history, verifying identities using police photographs, and accessing uh, vehicle registrations so far. So I don't know if that's a complete list, but uh, that gives you an idea. I, it doesn't seem too different than what being in a cop car, but I guess it is a little more portable at that point, right. too. So. Exactly. Let's get a little bit out of law enforcement here, Chachi. Uh, what's going on with Netflix? Why are you mad? Why are you mad, bro? Because it works. <laughs> Wait, okay. So the story that's in the rundown here is the fact that they're finally going to ditch uh, Silverlight, which I've been wondering, why the hell do I have Silverlight um, upgrading on my computer in the first place when I returned to Netflix on the laptop? And they're finally going to go to HTML5. Now, another part of the story is the reason they're finally going to HTML5 is that the W3C, who is the standards bearer for all the stuff online, the HTML, the CSS, uh, all those technologies that make the Internet work, basically, right? right. Uh, they have been working on something called the HTML5 Premium Video Extensions uh, that handles things like the video quality and DRM support to be fully implemented, according to Engadget here. Um so, I mean, that's usually the big issue, right, is can we get the DRM? I mean, Netflix wasn't on Android for the longest time because they couldn't figure out the DRM issues, right, to make the movie studios happy so they can do all this stuff. Right. Um, so you're, you're mad because they're moving from the one plat- platform from the o- to the other? Right. It works. There is absolutely no issue in streaming anything from Netflix. Other than the fact that it's a dead technology. It's not dead if someone's using it. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be so nice if you didn't have to install a new plugin and update update your plugin periodically? It's already there. It's already there. Yeah. I don't know. It's really I've already annoying. installed it. It's really annoying to update that thing when it's when it's due. I I go until Netflix says, "Hey, we're not going to work anymore unless you do this thing." You know how many okay. times I've updated it? It feels like forever because I, it feels like so much because I'm on so many different computers, to be honest. Uh, but that's a little bit of an annoyance. And Silverlight's being phased out. It's being, it's being uh, sunsetted by Microsoft itself, I believe. It um, works. It, it works, but for how long? Just because it works, does that, does that mean – just because it worked, does that mean if they were in Shockwave, they should have stayed there? If it worked? <laughs> I don't yeah. care what platform you're using. Mm-hmm. When you get – your system to the point where you have very little to complain about, Mm -hmm. don't mess with it. Okay. They've updated everything on their site. Are you still running ICQ? No. God, no. Because that didn't work. (laughs) The future's HTML5, though, Chach. You got to stay with the times. It is the The future. Flash. Flash is is the future. Oh, no. Oh, no. Flash. Hey, you, hey, you used that move for one of the stories last week. Did you? No, you did. Wow. It, it, that's also my uh, my in the sky. Oh, the cloud. In, in the cloud. In the cloud. Yeah, that's my uh, in the cloud move. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Excellent. No, it works. Why change it? I think it'll be – well, I, you know what? I don't think the transition is going to be that bad. HTML5 has been around for a bit. It's got a standard. It'll be uh, – they're not going to put it up until it works right. Uh, and, and they do this right. It's You're not going to need an app on your phone in order to watch Netflix, Chach. I want an app. But you don't need an app. I like the app. But then you won't need one. 
<laughs> some some people are anti-app. Um, no, I think it's good. I think it's um, it, it, it's good that HTML5 is coming around and getting with you know as much as we hate the DRM, but they're get, they're getting up in that class. Because HTML5 it needs to be the standard, so all these plethora of devices. Per- no, you want it to be the standard, so it works with your iPhone. No, with, with, so it works with yours without problems too. Do you? How's how's Flash performance for you, sir? Works fine. Works fine, really. Yep. Uh-huh. Are you doing a lot of Flash things on there? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with Flash? I don't. You don't. <laughs> no. 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 But but that whole idea. I mean, as developers. You got to think about, you know, okay, if I develop in Flash, then that's how many devices. Remember all those millions of Linux we were devices we were talking about earlier? They're not going to work as well. Um, so it helped break that down a little bit, I think. So I, I, I don't think you need to be bad at this. I don't think you're going to see any problem with this, sir. I probably won't, but it works. Why change it? You hate change. I do. You hate changes. You latched on to MySpace for the longest time, didn't you? Until I, I had to leave, yeah. Until you had to leave. <laughs> until, until until the glitter took over. Until the glitter took over. Yep. Mm, what do you think about Twitter? Uh, what about a Twitter music service that's uh, been rumored since le- early last week or mid last week? Leave it alone. Do we need that? They bought a service called I think it was called We Are Hunted. <sighs> I, I guess it's going to be another app. At this point, there's there's a music Twitter dot com. Uh, it doesn't really do anything yet. I can sign in, uh, but that's that's about it. It's just a, a hashtag music coming soon. Um, do, do, do you care what your Twitter uh, friends are listening to? No. Do you do any social music? I know I don't. Uh, Spotify. Spotify? Yeah. Yeah? And the only reason I'm social on there is because it pops up and tells me uh, what people are listening to. I don't think I like what my friends listen to. I think that's yeah, what exactly. you know. There's like one or two people that I give a crap what they're listening to. Yeah. And even then, half the time they're telling me on Twitter. Yep. Dinner time. Is that you? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, but that's coming up here um, with Twitter music. I, I don't know. I. It just seems like it's going to be another ping to me. Uh, I don't really see the appeal of it. Um, so, um, it, it, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't need to happen. It doesn't need to happen. Well, no. trying people to find are already to telling money. other people what they're listening to on Twitter via yeah. these other services. Exactly. Uh, at why Twitter feels the need to input in everything? Mm-hmm. They have a service. Once again, it works perfect. <laughs> I mean, it, it does what they want it to do. Even if we don't want it to do that, mm-hmm. so I mean, it, just leave it go. You're already giving us ads. We don't want those, but we understand. <laughs> That's forgivable, right? Oh, well, I mean, they gotta pay the bills. Yeah, and you can't be mad at a company for trying to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, but it, it doesn't. It, it, it's a waste of time because they're going to do it anyhow. Speaking of paying the bills, did you see this news coming out this week that uh, I know it's not in the rundown? Both Facebook and Twitter are investigating doing video ads. From the sounds of it on the Facebook side, they're going to do probably three or four major ones uh, uh, a day. Supposedly, they're going to go for about a million dollars a piece via, um, app? via your news stream. So it sounds like these videos are going to start popping up in your news stream. They sound like they're going to be autoplay. Which I'm already not liking all the noises my Facebook's been making lately without me doing anything about it. <laughs> like, my browser is making far too many noises. I, 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 was, I was playing this the other day. At some point, my Facebook started making noises anytime there was a notification. On top of anytime somebody messaged me when I left it open in a tab, my Google Voice plugin on Chrome... Uh, apparently uh, sends me a different, uh, a slightly different chime than everything else whenever I get a text message or, or voicemail. Uh, on top of whenever I'm talking with you on Google Talk all day, um, and there's probably two or three other things that make noise when I've randomly left them open in Chrome. Uh, yeah. When did my browser start making so much noise again? It, again, Wait. going back to your glitter, uh, gl- glitter getting we were talking about earlier. When did everything re, re- MySpace itself? <laughs> You know, 
Um, when MySpace changed, when MySpace the glitter, went, the glitter had to go somewhere. The glitter had to go somewhere. Oh, so this is like it's like water. It fills the area that it encompasses, right? Yep. So, and then it moves on. Then it moves on. Then once, it moves on. Once the once the container's full, it's got to go somewhere. And then it gets covered with Justin Timberlake, and nobody still cares. Justin and Timberlake or Justin Bieber, me. no one gives a shit. And then it, and then it keeps emailing me like 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 a crazy ex girlfriend wanting me to come back into the fold. Yes. Um, come yeah. back. We miss you. Go away, MySpace. I'm done with you. We've broken <laughs> up. We're moved on. Uh, insert Taylor Swift goat song here. Um, Chachi, one more story. One and more maybe story? This, maybe this is your future. Maybe this is where, uh, maybe this is, this is where this whole internet thing's going for you. Mars. I saw that. Okay. <laughs> All right. And here, here's the thing. First off. Yes. You have to pay. You have to pay for this? 25 bucks. 25 bucks. Uh, well, they said that, <laughs> that, that the price the price would be uh, dependent on the region. Okay. Um, well, let's and just, let's that just... the average wouldn't be higher than $25, so well, not to uh, uninclude anyone. Let's explain this. So the Mars One will start recruiting volunteers in July for a one-way trip to the Red Planet, according yes. to The Verge. So they're recruiting people. You can send in like a minute video, uh, 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 you know, thing to, to to say why you should go to Mars. Yes. Um, I imagine a lot of people are saying there's nothing for me here. Right. Uh, so, which kind of like so, and I guess. To a successful, I like how they say this will be a successful reality TV show. Um. It, it, it's, it's, it's beginning to take video submissions for the first astronauts in July. Um, they're going to, uh, they've already been met with 10,000 emails from interested parties. Uh, we're not sure how many of those are going to be serious contenders. They're going to have a lot of crap to go through on this one. I mean, well, can you they imagine? Said that it's like seven months of astronaut training. No, seven years. So seven years. Seven years okay. of astronaut training. Seven years of astronaut training. And then what they're going to try is pick twenty-four people by uh, twenty-fifteen. Um, it's going to take seven years. Cost the trip uh, about eight billion dollars to make this happen. Um, and then if everything, like how they put this here, if everything somehow works out according to plan, the arrival date is currently penciled into as April 24th, 2023. And it will be a, uh, where's the number here? 210 day flight. Yeah. And I don't think we've uh, perfected cryo freezing yet. No. Nope. You're going to be awake for the entire thing. I hope you charged your Game Boy. <laughs> Can you take a Game Boy with you to outer space? I hope so. What else are you going to do for 210 days in a in a tin box? Oh, man. I hope they're allowed to take a lot of crap with them. I would hope so. Well, they're going to give, it's not like there's a Walmart there. So. I know. <laughs> take everything that you're going to need to entertain yourself for 210 days. Imagine the TSA on this kind of trip. I'm trying to. <laughs> they're doing it wrong. They're right, doing not, it wrong. Yes. So what's the right way? Okay, let's say you had uh, eight billion dollars to spend. No, 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 no. Uh, no, I mean overall they're doing it right. Okay. I mean taking submissions, training people for an incredibly long time to make sure no one screws anything up. <laughs> Which is still going to happen because it's human nature. We're going to screw it up. You're saying they're not going to get there. Right. But instead of taking willing volunteers, they <laughs> should come up with a list of people <laughs> that we, as inhabitants of the planet Earth, yeah. no longer want to deal with. <laughs> like? I don't know. Uh, uh, the North Koreans. <laughs> All right, Jeez. we don't want to deal with the North Koreans anymore. So we we take a vote. Majority rules. We send the worst people on the planet out there. 
We, we, but we, the whole idea, though, is that we want to colonize the place. We want to make sure there's an effort for us to outreach and, and have that, that second, you know... We can't maintain the planet we have! So we're starting a new one. No, we're sacrificing... When you beat up your first car, you go get a new one. We're sacrificing valuable assets, possibly. Uh, but who's putting this up? I didn't even see that in the article. Who's this? Is this the Richard Branson thing? Uh, I have or, no idea. So, I so, didn't see a name either. <laughs> I, I think it's some mad professor somewhere that, that, that has an island. Um, or, or something. like like. And even if you're a successful TV show out of this, I mean, there's got to be other stuff. I mean, if, if this happens, why don't you got a TV show? So... Okay, great. You know, even if everybody goes up there and kills each other, you have a TV show somehow. I don't right. know if you're sending a film crew. Hopefully you're sending a pilot uh, that, that's outside of this, this scope, you know, that didn't send a video submission. I mean, and what kind of, what is the psychological profile of the no, person? No, it's a one-way trip. It, yeah, I was going to say, that's the other thing. It, what is the psychological profile of the person that says, yes, I will leave the planet forever, willingly? Forever. <laughs> I mean, maybe person? maybe they could come back. I mean, if this works out, like, wow, that worked out pretty well. We learned a lot. We can cut that in half. We can go get these guys, bring them back. I, you know, as we go here, uh, you know. But 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 I just can't see you getting twenty four stable people to say, hey, Mars. That seems like it's better than what I got going on here. John Carter seems like a good time. You know, I mean, maybe that's what they, that's how they're getting these guys. Be like, but you're going to be able to jump so high and rule the planet. No. You know what you should do? Show them Ghost of Mars? Clone. Clone? Yes. <laughs> so you, we're saying sheep? No. You clone the people who qualify. Okay. Instead of wasting uh, potentially valuable assets to this planet... Who could do good for this planet. Okay. But I don't think those are them. the people that are going to be accepted in this program. And it's kind of fun hearing the thunder here than there. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. We can but count I mean, and figure out how many miles away Chachi is from where I am. <laughs> but uh, it is a bad idea. Because, I mean, ultimately, you're going to have a few people that are going to Mars mm -hmm. that don't want to stay on Mars. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, you mean to tell me that one of the 24 people that volunteer for this... Uh, Isn't going to have second thoughts. Uh, well, not even that. Uh, not, not just second thoughts. But you mean to tell me that in the seven years they're going to train... Uh, one of these volunteers to fly the ship? Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Well, hopefully there is like an astronaut, you know, like an already astronaut that's going to be. And whatever they do, whatever they use to get them out there is going to be significantly different than a space shuttle, than whatever we're sending people up in because they didn't retire the space shuttles, right? Um, that thunder's getting amazing. Uh, it's. <laughs> Um, but no, because, all right, uh, you're, you're sending out 24, uh, people, not including, uh, crew. Okay. Yeah. Is one of them Sigourney Weaver? No. I think we should just be safe. Yeah. Well, she does have experience in kicking the shit out of aliens. So yeah, she does. Um, but anyhow, all right. So you're sending out 24 people plus crew. All right? Yeah. Unless you're splitting up these people into groups and training them to do specific jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's just say that that's what you're doing. You're spending the seven years to uh, train these people in different parts of uh, astronautness, <laughs> for lack of a, a better term. No, I think that's the perfect term. Um, and then, all right, so that's already 24 people that you're sending out there. All right? Yeah. So the ship you're sending out there has to have sufficient room and supplies mm -hmm. for 24 people for over a year. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's just a rough estimate because who knows what they're sending these people with 
to get started on Mars. Yeah. Are we going to create a biodome? It, I hope so. Or else these people are screwed. I don't know how many natural resources we figured out are up there yet. None. So. Well, actually, I don't know. The, the rover's up there. Maybe they're just going to take turns just riding it around. <laughs> just send, but, uh, them, send them up with a maker bot so they can make whatever they want. Yeah. You know? But uh, um, I need a rake. So you have maker that, bot. all right? Yeah. It's a one-way trip. This is definitely predicated on, on technology we think will be ready by this time. Uh, like, we're pretty sure we're going to solve this problem at this rate by this time. Is it legal to, to send people to space to die? <laughs> well, I think if they signed a waiver, yeah. What country are they coming from? That's the other thing, too. They well, no, because from... even assisted suicide is illegal, and that's what it would be. I don't think it's labeled a, a suicide. It, I mean, it's it's like, I think the if idea... If you're going on a one-way trip to Mars... Listen, somebody... You've already cast Somebody your needs chips. to Captain Kirk this shit and boldly go where no one has gone before. Right. We have a, we have a division for that. Yes. It's called NASA. Right, and they're being a coming underfunded. We're not sending anybody to the moon. We have a lot of people thinking about it, but we don't have any money to do anything and, and take steps. We're not even checking out the other side of the moon to make sure there's no Transformers over there. Or um, Nazis. Or Nazis. Hello. Uh, we've been watching a lot of Netflix lately, haven't we? Don't worry about it. And also the Nazi zombies up in Sweden, too. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's it's one of those. It, this is private companies saying we're going to do it this way. This is becoming alien, where it's a private company that's going to do the space exploration. You hear about the crazy stuff about we're going to pluck an asteroid that's passing by us out of space so we can mine it for precious minerals. I don't know why how we know what minerals are on there, um, but you know, this is exactly how. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like that that that's how like the Venom symbiote comes to Earth, right? Like like every time they, they have something like this, you know, like what rode the asteroid is, is, is my thought, you know. So I don't know. And we lost Chachi. Apparently the storm hit his room. Uh so on that note we'll go ahead and close up here uh as Chachi uh gets power back and works on his application to go to Mars. Uh again he's over at insertcointobegin.com. Yep. <laughs> I, my guess is his power came went out, which is probably really bad for us. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. You can drop us a line uh, uh, at that email address or at awesomecast on Twitter. We're on Facebook and Google Plus as well. And you can also join us here live every Tuesday night at live.circuitronmedia.com like Alex, Tom, and Bobby have. Uh, tonight, and that's probably a message there. Um, so with that, you have been our uh, awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh, and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh-based, so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you, wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out.